Hey everyone, it's Charlene. Today I'm going to share with you how to combine negative masking with emboss resist, two of my favorite techniques. So let's get started. I'm starting out here with the Brighter Days Gerber Daisy Stamps and Dies. This is a beautiful daisy and we're going to stamp it out on a piece of A2 size cardstock. We're going to do some heat embossing for our emboss resist technique. You can see I'm using my stamp wheel so I just have to be careful with the placement of my stamp because I'm going to rotate my panel in order to stamp in the opposite corner. So I've applied some anti-static powder. Now I'm coming in with some clear embossing ink, just making sure to get really good coverage. I don't mind if it goes off of the paper because that can be easily cleaned up off of the stamp wheel mat. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that and you could do it twice if you're not sure if you got enough embossing ink on there. And in fact, when I do a step later in the video, I do stamp it twice. I wish I had stamped it twice here, but I didn't. Now I can go ahead and flip my plate all the way around so that it's going to stamp in the opposite corner. Getting some more clear embossing ink on there. If you're working with something else like a misty, you can certainly rotate the paper or you can do like I did here with the stamp wheel, which is nice and rotate the plate. You'll see later because of where I want to stamp the uh, remaining daisies on the card, I do move the paper rather than the plate. So either way is fine. Once I have all of that embossing ink down, I'm going to come in with clear embossing powder. You also could use white embossing powder to do this. And I'm going to make sure I have my flowers all covered. Now they do overlap, so I'm not worried about it for this card, but if that part of your card is going to be really prevalent, you want to make sure that your stamps are not overlapping. I'm going to put my sentiment right there in the center with a vellum overlay so I know it's not going to show up once the card is finished. When you're melting clear embossing powder, it can be kind of hard to tell whether or not it has melted fully. So every once in a while, stop, turn your paper in the light so that you can see whether or not there is a reflection. If it's melted, it should be shiny. If it's matte, it means it hasn't been melted yet. So just make sure you get it all melted. For the second technique, which is negative masking, we're gonna take the coordinating die that goes with the daisy, and we're gonna cut it out of some masking paper. Now I'm gonna take this, the outline of the shape, and I'm gonna put it all the way around the daisy. This allows me to mask the area outside of the daisy. And traditionally when you're doing masking techniques, you're usually masking the actual image so that you could do things around it. But negative masking is fun because it allows you to color whatever your image is without getting anything on the remainder of your card panel. So I'm lining this up just outside of the embossed line that we did with the embossing powder. And then I can come in and do some ink blending. This will look really fantastic when everything is done because you'll have all the beautiful color from the blend, but you're going to see the daisy because of the emboss resist. So that melted embossing powder is going to resist the ink. Starting out here with a nice kind of teal color of ink. I'm going all the way around the tops or edges of the flower as well as the top of the leaf because I'm going to come in with another color for the middle and for the bottom. Here's the second color. This is a nice kind of medium tone of blue and then I'm going to come in with a really nice dark blue here. So this dark blue is going to be very dramatic um, and I'll go back and I'm going to add a second coat of that medium tone of blue as well as a second coat of my teal color and that's going to help everything blend out, help those other two colors get darker. And the reason this works so well is because you got to think about your paper as somewhat of a sponge when you're working with water-based dye inks. It's going to soak up the ink, the color, into the paper fibers. But it takes a little bit of time for your paper to do that. And that is why multiple coats spaced out of your ink is always going to look better than just one heavy coat 
right off the bat. You're more likely to get a blotchy result if you just try and blend straight through. So I always say go light at first. You could always build up and add more color. So you can see I've got those two beautiful daisies now. Now I'm gonna come in right with the corner of the flower and you can see I use my stamp packaging to help with placement. That's really helpful. You can just hold that acetate with the printed image right over your card panel and it will help you decide where to place your stamp and then you don't have to be worried about things overlapping. So I've stamped the first one. I'm gonna spin around my paper here and I'm gonna stamp the other corner. It's going to match. Now you don't see it on camera, but I do stamp these twice. And I think that the second stamping with the embossing ink really helps because it allows for more of that clear embossing powder to stick on your paper when you're melting it. Now, normally I do a live every Tuesday on the Pick a Fence Studios YouTube channel. I am on vacation this week, so I have this video instead. And if you guys missed the live last Tuesday, I did another fun technique with the Gerbera Daisy where we combined the spotlight technique with the eclipse technique. So be sure to check that out as well for another fun way to use this beautiful stamp. Now my ink was not completely dry when I went ahead and applied the embossing powder for these corner flowers. Not a big deal. I just came in here with my dry brush and just made sure I wiped away all of that embossing powder that was stuck to the ink. Coming in again with my heat gun and I'm melting all of that beautiful embossing powder. Emboss resist is really a fun technique. If you have not tried it, I definitely encourage you to give it a try because it's kind of magical. It's like this magic reveal. You get to still see that beautiful image but you get all of the beautiful color blending and it's a little bit more freeing because you can do any color blend with pretty much any stamped image. So I'm using blues and teals here over daisies, right? So it, it doesn't matter that my leaf is not colored green or that my centers aren't colored yellow. This gives you a lot of freedom to use whatever colors you want. So look at that gorgeous card panel. You see there where it's overlapped in the middle now? Don't have to worry about that. I'm coming in with that same dark blue that I used on the base of the flowers there and I'm just inking up an entire piece of cardstock because I am going to heat emboss my sentiment on here. So again, anti-static powder, that really is a helpful step. And then I'm gonna stamp with some clear embossing ink again and this will be twice as well. And keep in mind with sentiments, sometimes if you have really fine lines on your sentiment stamps, you can kind of mush out the line and it won't be as crisp if you press too hard with your stamping platform. So don't press too hard when you're when you're stamping out sentiments. It's better to err on the side of stamping twice lightly than to do one stamping and kind of smush it down really hard. Same thing coming in with the embossing powder. I did make sure that this panel was completely dry before I came in with the embossing powder. So and I just did that with my heat tool I didn't want any embossing powder to stick to the panel because it was still wet with the ink. And now I'm heating that white embossing powder with my heat gun, just making sure it melts well. I like to go in and kind of lightly melt everything and then go back through and melt a second time. I, I think that gives a better result, at least in my experience it does. So if you struggle at all with embossing powder, you might wanna give that a try. Once those look good, I'm gonna come in with the coordinating dies and cut those out. Now I did cut out extras because I'm gonna be doing a floating vellum sentiment and that'll make more sense as we go along here, but I've cut out two extra of the word die outline and I'm gonna layer that up and then I'm gonna set that aside and then I'll take the actual piece that we heat embossed on and I'm gonna glue a word die cut behind that as well. So we have one set that's just two blank ones glued together and then we have a set with 
the one that we actually stamped on with the sentiment as well as one blank one behind it. Now I'll repeat that same process with the second half of my sentiment which this will read brighter days ahead which I think is a really nice sentiment for anyone who might be struggling or have something going on in their life. Now I've got my vellum circle here and I'm just making sure I like where the placement of the sentiment is before I glue it down on the vellum. Now you do want to put an acrylic block or something like that over the top of this when it's drying because vellum is not absorbent. It's a um, kind of a plastic and so it's not going to absorb that glue. You want to give it a little bit more time for the glue to dry before you start doing a lot of stuff with it. Once I have the sentiment glued down on here, I'm going to flip the piece over and I'm going to go ahead and glue those other two blank outline die cuts that we cut out. And the reason I'm doing this is because when we glue it down to the actual card panel that we created earlier with the negative masking and the emboss resist, we're not going to have to worry about any glue line showing number one, because we're just going to apply our glue to the back of those die cuts. And number two, it's going to help to lift the vellum up off of that back card panel, which is going to give you more of an opaque to the sentiment so it's not going to quite show as much through there and also it just gives it a really nice raised look it adds a very subtle amount of dimension and looks really nice on a card all right applying the glue on the back there like I had talked about and then we're going to put this right in the center I'm really happy with this card I think it's beautiful but it's also going to mail really well because it doesn't have a lot of dimension I did add a very thin white border all the way around so I trimmed off about an eighth of an inch all the way around on that emboss resist negative masking panel that we created now I'm stamping my sentiment on the inside of the card here, just in the center. This sentiment stamp is actually three different stamps. The thinking of is one, the you is one, and the mom is one. Here's the finished card. I hope you guys picked up a few tips and tricks today. Please be sure to like and subscribe as well as hit that notification bell so that I can continue bringing you more crafty content in the future. Until next time, Happy crafting.